Mega Hit, they said on 9. Twist the dial and let it sing. Homebrew magic from the spring. Signal bouncing through the so, air. Transistor, so the, the unit's back the way. It's the last day of school. Savage hay fever, but I got an SMS about some stuff that's arrived in the mail. Yippee ki -yay. Well, we were going to do an unboxing video, but uh, set the camera up and chopped the top of my head off. And look, let's face it, pe people are pretty much over watching people unbox stuff now. It's a little bit boring. Uh, what we got in this uh, parcel was the transistors. These are the past transistors for my realistic DX160 uh, general coverage receiver. And that failed because of something dumb that I did when I was trying to put it in the standby when I was teaming it with my one tube transmitter. Now, I fixed it to get it going with a 3-pin 9-volt regulator, but I am going to reinstate this uh, transistor so that the unit's back the way it was. I think that's probably a better way of operating. And so that's going to go in, so I'm really happy about that, and hopefully that all goes well. But the main thing I was waiting for was this, and this is a 100-watt HF amplifier, which cost me, I think it was like pennies. It wasn't a lot of money, and what I'm going to need for this, of course, is some low-pass filters. Now, I was thinking about going the mini kits route. Now, mini kits had a transceiver kit you build from modules, and they still have it there. But they do say on the site, don't buy this because it's going to be really expensive, and you can just go out and buy a cheaper transistor off the shelf. Well, that's very honest of them, but I think um, it's being a little bit too honest because, really, people should be able to work that out for themselves. And there is a lot to be said for the pride and the excitement of building your own equipment. And I will say... Those modules look like they're very, very handy as shortcuts to completing homebrew projects. So you could home roll part of the thing that you're building and then use some of these kit modules to speed things up. So you could use the maybe the audio amplifier and, or in this case, you could use the filter unit. Now, I was thinking about ordering that filter unit and uh, it was very, very tempting. But I think I'm going to have, have a go at home rolling my own low pass filters because then I get the fun of actually getting a bit of practice at using my nano VNA to sweep them to see what their pass band is looking like. And I'll also get the chance to use some relay units that I've bought for previous projects that I haven't used. I'll be switching with relays. So that will be the plan. Now, mounting this is going to be fun because it looks like they haven't really given you much provision for actually mounting this in a case. But I'm sure we will work something out. We can maybe sit it on its side inside and run a fan past it as well. So get it fan cooled. It's that time in the video where I'm going to ask you, in fact, beg you to uh, reach down Hit that like or that hate button. And if you would like to see more videos like this, the subscribe button, it would mean the world to me. 7-3, back to the video. Well, hello folks. It's been near the holidays and we're on the test bench. And as we saw at the beginning of the video, some new toys have arrived now. I've got friends coming from overseas, so I'm not gonna have a lot of time to play radio. We all need to understand that radio is a hobby. It's not something that we need to be obsessed about for uh, all the hours that we're awake. And unfortunately, uh, that's pretty much me, but uh, I have to keep it in check uh, for the sake of domestic uh, bliss. This <laughs> amplifier may be a great uh, buy or it might be an absolute piece of crap. Rather than commit to this and build a, an amplifier that's multi-band, the plan is to jump into the Bible. This is uh, Radio Projects for the um, Radio Projects for the Amateur, Volume 2 by Drew Diamond, VK3XU. And um, I will put a link below to the uh, review I did of these books. Love them. I've gotten so much out of them. The shack is powered via his Miser's DC 13.8 volt supply, which has been fantastic. I've shorted it. I've done dumb things to it. It hasn't blown up. It's done what it said it would do, which is protect itself. And I've actually implemented that power supply with rewound microwave transformers, which is something that Drew Diamond didn't uh, recommend. But uh, he did tell me about um, pairing two of them up to lower the magnetizing current that's very, very high if you're only using one. So that was a way of me getting it to actually work. So once again, Drew came to the party and saved the day. Uh, so the plan is I'm going to order the cores I need and the capacitors that I don't have via mini kits south australia wonderful site to get stuff that you need and i'm hoping he's got the cores that i need and 
If he doesn't, I'll have a look at uh, what other cause he has because I'm sure there'll be something that uh, will, will fit the fit the bill. And uh, But if I get the kit cause recommended by Drew, I shall do that because I know that these designs are tried and tested because here is a picture of the actual rig that he built and his documentation in these books is absolutely fantastic. You will re not regret buying the books. Like I said, I have used them over and over and over again and had so much fun with the stuff that you can learn from these especially if you like to ugly build. We're going to power this up and transmit into a dummy load with no low pass filter and just make sure that it's actually working. That would be a good start. I have checked the input, uh, that's one of my multimeters here to make sure there's no short circuit on the power supply because that's always a bad start to the uh, process when you power it up and you, you short circuit uh, the input. So that looks like it, um, it should. Um, it's a nice and high impedance and we will power it up and transmit and just see how much power we're getting out of it. And then we will order these parts. Let's go. Now the meter on this uh, dummy load is calibrated for the VHF UHF. So it's not gonna give me a really accurate measurement. I wanted to make sure that it was working. And presently it's giving me about um, three watts. So it's reading way below. So what I think I will do is I will endeavor to get my AV1000 meter, which will be a lot more accurate, just to see whether we are getting anywhere near 100 watts with this uh, supply. And I uh, will use this just as a dummy load. But let's get this wired up. Well, as we strongly suspected, <laughs> it's crap. So my strong suspicion of this is that either the LD MOS has fried itself before it even got to uh, start working. It's oscillated, self-oscillated and destroyed itself, or it was crap to begin with. So where to from this point? Well, stay tuned, folks, because you know me. I'll find some dodgy way to get this going. Once again, um, the solder sucker has saved the day. So we'll meter this out and just see uh, how sick it is. Well, it's one in the morning. Those mystery MOSFETs we put in didn't work. We've had to play around with biasing and whatnot. The IRF 510 has come through. Obviously not getting anywhere near 100 watts with an IRF 510. I think we're getting about 30 watts. This is on uh, the DCT. I think we're putting in about 4 or 5 watts. And uh, just take a look. This is a double side bam. Hello. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hello. Hello. On CW, this is on the um, 20 watt scale. Into a dummy load, obviously. Take it up into the 200 watt scale. I'd say it's, it's going over the 20 watts and on the 200 watt scale, we're looking at uh, about um, 30 watts, I'd say, probably 25. So 25 watts, better than five out of the Hermes. Nothing to write home about. We might try and power this amplifier off 19 volts off the uh, laptop supply. That might get us a little bit more. I don't know what the, whether the other components are rated at that voltage. That would be the only issue. We might have a look at the circuit diagram and then work out whether we can do that. Uh, but that'll be tomorrow because it's one in the morning. Well, it was working, and then it wasn't working, and then we spent all night chasing faults, checking tracks, um, dodgy as. Anyway, we got it going again, and so I will show you that now. I've got on the 20 volt supply, 15 watts I was getting out of it on the 13 uh, volt supply, so it's not a lot of power, but it's an IRF um, 510. I probably could get a lot more power out of IRF 530s. Alas, we don't have them because we blew them all up. Uh, but um, if they blow up, I will replace them with IRF uh, 540s and I will probably do some um, current limiting on this thing as well. But uh, you know me, I like to see lots of smoke. So uh, stand by and I'll give you a demonstration. 
Well, we had a look at the schematic diagram to check the component values of the surface mount devices that are used for voltage control and all that sort of good stuff. And it appears that uh, they are easily able to cope with the 19 volts you're going to get out of a laptop supply. So I'm going to go back through my jump box. And I do have a laptop supply on the bench that I'm using for my QRP Labs uh, uh, amplifier, which is not a linear amp. And uh, although the design is very, very similar, I'm thinking that uh, it would be nice just to have a dedicated supply for this uh, particular amplifier. And I'm going to need to test it on the bench anyway. So we're going to go through here and just see if we can find ourselves a nice 20 volt supply. 20 volts, 3 amps. Well, folks, the amplifier seems to be going, and I will put that in a rudimentary case or on a board. I'm not sure yet. Probably going to make it very steampunk because it's probably going to blow up at some point in time. But I'm getting G90-like power out of it. For me, that's like having a linear amplifier. Um, 20 watts on FT8, that's QRO for me. And it might nab me that South American station I've been hankering after to get that QRZ award. What I'm going to do now is quickly replace the uh, parts in the DX160 as well. I'm praying that those transistors are not dodgy as the uh, LD MOSFET that came on that amplifier. And uh, we'll see how we go. Well, there's no room on the test bench. <laughs> Such a lazy sod. Um, so we're going to operate on it here. It's only one part that needs to come out. So it shouldn't be too difficult to, uh, to get this to happen. Fingers crossed. We also need to get the base off this thing. I will get a transistor out and run it through a tester just to make sure that it, uh, it looks right. And um, yeah, that's it there. So let's hope that um, this is behaving itself. It's 1173, um, which I think is what we were supposed to put in there. So let's um, drop this in and pray to God that it, uh, it behaves. And we might fire up the uh, solder sucker and clean out that hole. It might make life a little, little easier. So turbines to speed. Can I have a clear prop? All you aviation enthusiasts will know that's uh, from uh, Jimmy's World. Fantastic YouTube channel. Absolute shambolic mess. Okay, let's grab this lead so it doesn't fall down inside the innards of this um, wonderful device we're working on. But will it work? That is the $64 million question. Nevertheless, it will come down. Well, you go, South Australian station, and uh, the DX160 is back 100%. Well, still here. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. The DX160 is now fully operational, as you saw at the end of this video, and uh, we have a, an amplifier that's kind of working, give us about mm, just under 20 watts on uh, 40 meters. I'm sure that that will drop off quite markedly as we go higher in frequency, but uh, it is what it is. Um, had a lot of fun playing around with it, and um, we'll see how we go when those filter parts arrive and I have a go at uh, doing 20 meter um, FT8. Fingers crossed. 7-3, and I shall see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.